Hey guys, here's a question. Is the universe conscious? And why are we asking this? Let me give away the punchline right away. I believe the universe is conscious according to my own particular way of thinking about the question. I'll get to that in the next video. But there is debate, speculation, and controversy about this far-reaching conjecture about the consciousness of the universe. Is the universe itself conscious? And if so, in what way? I don't know the answer. And it would be remarkable if I did, because as far as I know, no one knows the answer. But many are intensely interested in this question, holding a variety of viewpoints about it. I've just spent some time looking at the arguments people are making about something called panpsychism. The idea that in some way consciousness is a property of all things. Or more broadly, that consciousness is in the very nature of the universe itself. This is a very old philosophical position, one that goes back to ancient times. Some of the influential early Greek philosophers held this view, as did many Western philosophers all the way through the idea's heyday in the 19th century. And it's part of many religious traditions, including Taoism and Buddhism. Given the long history of this idea, it's either absurd or tremendous hubris to make a short video or two about this subject. And so to this I have to plead guilty. So let me lay out the plan for talking about this fascinating topic that's making the rounds in scientific, computer science, and philosophical circles. Today I want to get at why this question is timely and why it's making a comeback now after lying relatively dormant for much of the 20th century. In the next video I want to look at some of the major arguments for panpsychism some of the approaches to thinking about it, and to give my own thoughts on the matter, as limited and hard-headed as they may be. One problem with a discussion like this is defining what we mean by consciousness. Traditionally, the word seems to connote something about the subjective nature of experience. It gets talked about in terms of awareness, either awareness of the external, or awareness of something within oneself. The philosopher Thomas Nagel famously put forth the idea in his 1974 paper, What Is It Like to Be a Bat?, that an organism has conscious mental states, quote, if and only if there is something that it is like to be that organism. So what is it like to be a bat? What is it like to be a rock? According to this view, if there is nothing that it is like to be a rock, then a rock lacks consciousness or conscious experience. People tend to have an intuitive sense of what we're talking about when we talk about consciousness. But it remains to be seen whether that idea is coherent, and whether that idea is narrowly focused on human consciousness rather than on consciousness in some broader sense. Does it apply to dogs? Yes, many people may say dogs are conscious, but may be conscious in a sense that is different from human consciousness. What about fish? Are fish conscious? Well, maybe there is something that it is like to be a fish. How about rocks? Hmm. A lot of differing opinions there among conscious humans. My informal survey of those around me is that after demanding a definition of consciousness, people are voting down the idea of rock consciousness. So perhaps there's a common sense intuition that rocks do not have consciousness. Well, intuition has its place but it would be nice to have a firmer foundation on which to stand. Panpsychism diminished as a mainstream concept after the 19th century, although it always did have some influential advocates throughout the 20th century, including Carl Jung, Alfred North Whitehead, and arguably Bertrand Russell. But the idea is undergoing a renaissance in recent years. Why? At least two reasons. The traditional scientific view is that consciousness emerges out of the functioning of the human brain. Without neurons firing, there is no consciousness. This is the materialist point of view. But science has increasingly run up against the limits of a strictly scientific materialism. For example, our inability to bridge the gap between general relativity and quantum mechanics. Or, for example, the apparently fundamental uncertainties built into quantum mechanics. These difficulties raise questions about whether a strictly materialist point of view will ever be adequate to explain everything that is. 
Some feel these limits cast doubt on the origin and nature of consciousness. Is the functioning of our material brains, in some way we do not yet fully understand, sufficient to account for the phenomenon of consciousness? Or is that an assumption rooted in the biases of scientific materialism? It sounds plausible on one level to argue that consciousness arises out of the functioning of the brain. I had a professor of neuroscience in college, an esteemed and senior scientist, who when questioned found it completely adequate to answer that consciousness arises out of the complexity of the human brain. In his view, it's an emergent property. In other words, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts in some way we do not yet understand. In this view, consciousness is not reducible to the parts of the brain, but is a higher level phenomenon that emerges out of lower level properties and functioning, and there is something about the complexity of the system that accounts for this. He was content to leave it there without addressing what causal agency accounts for the emergent properties. It seems a little like magic. Somehow with adequate complexity, a new thing, not seen in any of its component parts, is ignited, and presto, we have consciousness. There is no proof in this argument. To me, it's a comforting story, one that could be true or could not be true in the absence of any convincing proof. And a second reason for the renaissance of panpsychism. There has been in recent years a nascent effort to understand the hard problem of consciousness. This is the mystery behind a material or neurological origin of subjective experience. For example, how can we account for the feeling of happiness or the subjective experience of the color blue? These subjective experiences are sometimes called qualia. They are by definition not explainable verbally, one needing to have had the subjective experience in order to have a sense of it. Now I don't want to talk about this as if thinkers have a broad consensus about it. Pretty much everything I'm saying here will have some people who will take issue with it. But I think I'm on pretty safe grounds in arguing that these issues are front and center now in a way that they were not a few decades ago. Research into computer science and artificial intelligence has intensified interest in the hard question of consciousness, as progress in artificial intelligence raises the question of whether increasingly sophisticated artificial intelligences, AIs, will be conscious. Is there something unique about biological tissue? The so-called wetware that we have inside our skulls? What about a highly complex computer that does not yet exist on Earth that mimics exactly brain function, but is not made of biological tissue, but of silicon or some other material. Let's say this AI perfectly replicates the functioning of the brain, reflecting all the synaptic connectivity of these neurons and the consequences of their being connected the way they are. This is often termed the connectome. Would this AI be conscious? Is mimicry functionally the same as actual brain function? Does replicating the exact functioning of the human nervous system with software render an AI conscious? Or might that AI be indistinguishable from a conscious entity and yet not have Nagel's property of there being something that it is like to be that AI? In other words, might we have an AI that is functioning in every testable way as if it were conscious and yet not be conscious in the way that we mean the term. Or in still other words, might this AI be functioning as if it were conscious, and yet in reality there's nobody home? So these are some of the reasons that panpsychism, the idea that consciousness resides in the universe itself, or is present in some way in all things, has returned as a concept of great interest to many people. In my next video, I want to look at some of the main ways that people have approached panpsychism to examine some of these arguments, and I'll offer some of my own thoughts as well. Be sure to subscribe, you can follow my Instagram, and thanks a lot for watching.